been a long road to get to this point, but I'm really glad we're finally here. Hello everybody, welcome back to Meddling in Antiquity. My name is Tere, and today we're going to be talking about Lady Gaga's newest album, Chromatica. Chromatica is Lady Gaga's eighth album, total sixth solo album. So in Lady Gaga's discography so far, we have The Fame, which was her first major studio album, The Fame Monster, which was a smaller, almost EP-ish album that only had eight songs on it, which gave us the smash hit Telephone featuring Beyonce. Then we have Born This Way, Art Pop, Joanne, and Chromatica. And that is not counting Lady Gaga's two duet albums or other kind of medium that she's done. And that would be her Cheek to Cheek album that she did with Tony Bennett in 2014, and then A Star Is Born which obviously is incredible. But today I'm going to be focusing on Chromatica, but not just the album itself, but how I feel Lady Gaga's release of Art Pop actually prepared us for Chromatica, which shows exactly how ahead of its time Art Pop actually was. So now that I kind of have all of that out of the way, what we're gonna be discussing, Let's get into the album. So I've listened to the album all the way through once. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's an incredible, it's a good album. I really like it. Um, I really like the use of the orchestra and the interludes in Chromatica 1 and 2. I think that's a really cool little touch, a different flair that adds a little extra to the album itself. Um, and obviously everyone knows Stupid Love and Rain. Uh, and uh, Rain On Me, because those are the first two singles off the album. Um, but it is a good album, but there are some things that do stick out for me more than others. Um, obviously Stupid Love, because it has had so much radio play, um, though it is not my, one of my favorites. Um, I found Rain On Me, quite honestly, to be a bit forgettable. Um, it's, it's not a song that I really have the desire to listen to, at all and I think if anything that is going to be my skippable song on this album. If I could pick one to just skip forever it would most certainly be Rain On Me. Um, however the songs that really stand out to me are the first actual vocal song on the album Alice which is really cool. I like the references to Alice in Wonderland because having grown up a huge fan of fantasy Alice in Wonderland is something that I always really enjoyed as a kid. Um, and then we have um, Sour Candy, which is Lady Gaga's duet with Blackpink, which I didn't really think I would enjoy as much as I do. Um, it is super fun, and I'm not someone who listens to K-pop, like, at all. I have heard one song by Blackpink before, and it was the Blackpink in your area one. I don't even know what it's called. I just know that everyone really likes the K-pop thing and I'd never really listened to it and now I'm really tempted to go in and listen to all of their stuff because I love this song. It's really good. Um, and I, well, like I said, I was really surprised at exactly how much I enjoyed the energy and the vibe that song gave off. And then I think my last big one that I really, really enjoy is Sign From Above which is Lady Gaga's duet with Elton John. Um, it's, it's really cool because it has a similar feeling to um, Lady Gaga's Marry the Night song, which is the music video for Marry the Night was about her dealing with her struggles of being rejected by her former label, being fired, and then having to essentially build, rebuild herself from the ground up. And that it isn't something an experience that her and Elton, on, Elton John most certainly do have in common. So for them to be able to do a song that expresses that, also for Lady Gaga to essentially have Elton John work with her, despite the fact that he has kind of gone into a semi-retirement post Rocket Man um, and the release of his album Diamonds, is absolutely incredible and really does speak to how influential of an artist she has become since 2008 and the 12 years that she has been kind of a major facet of pop music. 
Um, I also do really enjoy the final song on the album, Babylon. It's it's really fun. It kind of gives me almost like a Vogue feel to it. And I think that's very much on brand for Lady Gaga since a lot of what she does is very influenced by the queer community. Um, and I feel like that's very much, Babylon is very much an homage to the fact that she really does owe her career to queer people. And I, she acknowledges that very frequently. She's one of the very few people who actually does. And I really do appreciate that coming from her. Um, so that's kind of a breakdown of the things that I really like about the album, some of the things I'm not super fond of. Um, and now I want to get into the influence of art pop on Chromatica because it's there and you don't really know it unless you're really familiar with art pop. Let's get into it. So I'm a huge fan of art pop. As you can see, it is this and Joanne are the only two Lady Gaga albums I own um, on vinyl. Mostly because I liked the feel and the aesthetic of art pop so much. Um, a lot of the songs are things that I really enjoy. They're kind of the same vibe that I really like in my music. Um, with the exception of song number seven, which is no longer available. And that would be Do What You Want. And uh, that is no longer available for very obvious reasons, which is really unfortunate because that is the version that is on here. Um, why couldn't she have just put the Christina Aguilera duet or the solo? There were, there were options. I should probably take a Sharpie and just scribble the name out at some point. And I will do that. I just, the back is an optical illusion and I don't kind of don't want to ruin it because it's really cool to look at. Um, though I'll probably get like some white paint and do it and follow the actual marking lines so I don't actually mess with the illusion. Um, however, in my opinion, art pop was far ahead of its time and I knew that in 2013 as a sophomore in high school that art pop was far, far, far ahead of its time. And I think that's part of the reason why it did not do as well in 2013 when it was initially released. Um, which is really unfortunate because it is a good album and there are a lot of good songs on it. Um, I actually got to see the Joanne World Tour uh, in 2017 the summer before I went away to college for the for the first time. Um, and she performed a bunch of songs from The Fame. She performed some from The Fame Monster. She performed a bunch from Born This Way and a bunch from Joanne. Obviously, she performed one song from the entire Art Pop album, which is disappointing. It sucked because the only, the applause is not the only good song on Art Pop. There's so many incredible, incredible songs, so many really cool things on here. Like uh, Gypsy is really good. Uh, Dope is kind of a song about Lady Gaga really detoxing the feelings that she had about her substance abuse issues. Um, Aura, which is amazing. Venus, obviously. Guy, which the seven minute short film that combined um, the title song for the album, Art Pop, um, Venus and Guy itself with the end credits being Man I Cure. It's, this album was incredible and it's really sad that it oftentimes does not get the credit it deserves for being as good as it was considering that it was, that I feel it is essentially the blueprint for what we got with Chromatica. There's even very, you can tell very much like if you compare the cover art and the aesthetic of Chromatica to Art Pop, it's very similar. The idea of the one wording, the, the decor of the actual album itself, though Chromatica is very much more kind of 
on the opposite spectrum. It's very much more kind of, it's got more of an edge to it than, than art pop does, but they're very much within the same style of music. And I think I, in my opinion, I think it's really time for a lot of people who were a little too young to understand the concept of art pop or who didn't really understand the idea of shock pop. Now that they have listened to Chromatica, I do think it's really time for fans of Lady Gaga, like as in general, to go back and revisit art pop and kind of really understand the comparisons between art pop and Chromatica because they're like I said, they're very, they're very similar in how they're formatted. And it'd be a shame if art pop faded into obscurity when it really did pave the way for Chromatica. Um, and the way I really do feel it did this is um, the, the idea of Lady Gaga branching out into shock pop um, is kind was very much not out of the ordinary for her, but the way she specifically did it in things like art pop and the references that she makes in art pop to Andy Warhol and applause and all of these, the artists of the art pop era, people who were doing really unusual things with music and fashion and everything else, uh, really kind of, is obvious when you look at Chromatica, when you listen to Chromatica, when you see the aesthetic of Chromatica. It's just a more techno, it's just a more technologically focused version of art pop with different songs. So I do think it is really time for a lot of people to go back and revisit art pop um, in compilation with Chromatica. And I would like to see from Lady Gaga would be a um, a re like a grand re-release of art pop with I would like the Christina Aguilera version the Christina Aguilera duet version of Do What You Want um, and re-release like 100% actually fully re-release art pop and um, do a double a duet package with uh chromatica very similar to what was done with um the fame and the fame monster um i think that would be a really clever move to get people to kind of really reintroduce themselves to art pop and to kind of finally understand art pop as it was meant to be understood um which is a work of art. And now that a lot of the people who are Lady Gaga fans are now in their early 20s, in their 30s, going into their 30s, I think that it's, it really is time for that kind of reintroduction to art pop because now we're old enough to understand it. Um, so I think that's really as much as I have to say. Like I said, I am a very big fan of art pop. I, I It's just a really good album. There's uh, so many good songs on here and I think that, I really do think it's time for it to get the credit it deserves for being such an, an amazing album. And I think if people, if it was paired with Chromatica, people would finally be able to kind of give it the chance that it deserves to actually be seen. So that's all I really have to say about that. Um, so let's get into final thoughts. It's very obvious I'm a very big fan of Lady Gaga. I saw her in 2017 during the Joanne World Tour. I have been, I've pretty much been a fan since I was since I found out who she was. Um, I have the Fame, the Fame Monster and Born This Way on CD. I have Art Pop and Joanne on vinyl. I, I was one of those people who hopped on the computer and watched the world premiere of the Telephone music video. So I, I really have been a fan of Lady Gaga since I realized that uh, music is something I want to make a career out of. 
and when I as a sophomore in high school kind of seeing her come out with art pop I was just so fascinated by the aesthetic of it and by how unique and cool it was and I think that it really does it really did pave the way for Lady Gaga to be able to release Chromatica at this point in time because now her audience or a lot of people who were her audience back then are now old enough to understand the art of shock pop and how that actually works and how it functions. Um, Chromatica is a great album. I really enjoy it. Um, there's not even really a couple. It's just really one big miss for me. And that would be Rain On Me uh, for sure. Um, I mean, even I tried to watch the music video. I just, I couldn't, I didn't really focus on it. It wasn't something that really drew my attention. Eventually, I would like to see a music video for Sour Candy because I think that energy would be profound. Um, but it's an incredible album. Um, and I do really think that a dual release, a, a re a, a, a duo package and a re-release of um, art pop is most certainly called for now since I think um, hopefully a lot of people will take the opportunity that now that Chromatic has been released to actually go back and re-listen to art pop because I think that is definitely essential listening if you want to kind of understand Lady Gaga's ability to shift aesthetics from album to album because there is a very distinct visual aesthetic between every single album she's done so that's really all i have to say um if you're if you're a lady gaga fan if you're kind of around my age and you were really young when art pop came out definitely re re introduce yourself to art pop because if you really enjoy if you enjoy chromatica i can guarantee 100 percent that you will enjoy art pops so much more now that you are an actual adult with a mostly developed brain and cognitive abilities. I promise. So that's it. Um, I will see everybody on Saturday for our next episode of Serial Scrutiny. Bye!